Well, thank goodness for Norman Powell. It was a struggle tonight, but Powell and the Raptors get the job done. A big fourth quarter for Terrence Davis as well, as the Raptors win ugly, 86-81. Their record now 15-15, 500 for the first time in a long time. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Raptors Nightcap. Randy Urban alongside Sherman Hamilton, Paul Jones, and Jack Armstrong. Guys, that was one of the uglier games that we've seen in a while. I'm not, I'm not surprised, Randy. Uh, the second night of the back-to-back -back and the Raptors, you know, playing playing like, like five and five and seven nights kind of thing. Um, an admirable road trip. And for anybody that thought it was going to be easy when they went up 57-41, it's never as easy as it looks. And um, look, you, you got to give their, their defense credit in the fourth quarter. And Nick Nurse pushes the right button. You talked about Terrence Davis. I thought he did a great job. I thought Pascal Siakam made two huge defensive plays, closing out on the perimeter and getting a piece of a shot and keeping it in play that the Raptors could turn into baskets. Sure, it looked like a, a Wednesday night at the Y there for a while with all the bricks going up. You know what that's about, but uh, what did you see? I'm sure, I yeah, well, that ain't right. Yeah. That ain't right. <laughs> No, he's I right, though, Jack. Watching. He's right, though, Jack. I've played with Herb, so I've seen the bricks go up. <laughs> I, I will say this, though. It was a game where no team shot over 39%. So it was going to be a defensive, grind it out, who could get stops at the right time and make enough offensive plays. And I tell you what, Minnesota helped the Raptors every way they could. Malik Beasley was just taking shots and just forcing the issue sometimes and just took away advantage opportunities for the Minnesota Timberwolves. I thought... Ricky Rubio really struggled. I think McLaughlin should have been in the game to end the game for the Minnesota Timberwolves. I thought yeah. he was really good. And, you know, at the end of the day, you, you put Fred back in the game and he starts to just pace his team again and, and get them into situations that they can be successful. And then, you know, Pascal, I thought, made winning plays. And this is, to me, one of the more growth games that I've seen from Pascal. And in a game where he wasn't shooting the ball well, I thought he made winning plays, and, and that's what good players do. You don't have your best stuff. What do you have to help your team win? How can you aid your team and give them an opportunity to get the W? And, and I thought Pascal did that. And it was good to see other guys chip in. It was good to see Terrence Davis do what he did. But in another game like this, second night of, of, of a back-to-back -back in, in a situation where you're on the road, you're just trying to get it over with, I thought the Raptors hung around, did a good job, and got a W. Jack, how did you see it? Well, you know, just to tag uh, what Sherman Jonesy said, I, I think the one thing that jumps out is, you know, you play Stanley Johnson and Terrence Davis pretty much the whole fourth quarter. They didn't even play, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, give those two guys credit. And uh, I'm sure those guys are on the bench mumbling, saying, what's going on here? Why am I not playing? Well, you never know. And that opportunity came. Uh, I thought Stanley Johnson did a great job defensively. They had him a lot on uh, the big cat and he did a pretty good job and uh, Davis made some plays. So give those guys credit. And it was just one of those nights and we've been through so many of these back to backs in our careers where you just need somebody to come out of nowhere and make plays. And uh, they found it. And I give Nick nurse credit. He never gets married to the script. You know, the script mm -hmm. evolves. Uh, you know, you, uh, we chatted about this last night, a guy like Mike Budenholzer, uh, you know, I, I, I look at Nick Nurse and he just feels the game and he reads the game and he's bold and he's decisive and he's willing to shift gears when things don't work. So, uh, I, you know, and their defense in the start of the game and their defense at the end of the game was great. They ended on an 11-0 run, Randy, the last 340 after giving up a 25-1 to run where they didn't score for nine and a half minutes. But you know, they made a muscle at the end. I, 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 again, I point to some of the plays by Pascal. Um, I, it, it, you know, Sherm talked about winning plays, the blocks to me, uh, the dunk, uh, you know, to tie the game at 81. Uh, and, and that's, you know, that's, that's when you muscle up. And, and as Jack said, I, I love what Nick Nurse did. He just said, okay, you know what? I got tired people. You two guys are fresh. Get in there. And Terrence Davis played the entire fourth quarter. He didn't come out. Those were the only 12 minutes he played the entire fourth quarter. And, and sure, just going back to what Jack said about Stanley Johnson, I don't even remember 
if there's a reason why he was out of the rotation. He was playing pretty well in the minutes he was getting, you know, a week or two ago. All of a sudden, he's out of the rotation, but gets his chance today and, and makes the most of it. It really feels like he's bought in, you know, at the highest level this season. Well, he's kind of had to. I mean, this is a situation where he's going to want to have a deal next year and he's going to want to continue to play in the NBA. So he's going to have to do some things to really make a case for himself. And he's doing it the right way, to your point, Herbs. He's doing it in terms of the defense, the rebounding, the energy, offensively, just making the right decisions. And, you know, my heart broke a little bit for him when he hit that three-point shot in the yes. corner, but he stepped on the line. It was it was such a good play for a guy like Stanley Johnson who had been doing so many things so well on the defense and hustle end of the floor. It was just unfortunate he stepped out of bounds. But, you know, guys are hungry. And, you know, Nick Nurse has done a very good job of really setting the table and allowing his, his players to know that if you do the right things, if you go out there, you continue to work hard, continue to build, you might get buried for a bit, but you're going to get an opportunity. And when you get your opportunity, make the most of it. And he gives and gives with two hands when guys get the job done. So good for Stanley for staying professional, staying ready. And when his number was called, he had significant impact in this game. And I just want to tag what Sherm was saying about Stanley, you know, and you mentioned the contractual situation. I tell you what, as a coach, this team isn't easy to coach, yet they're great to coach. And I'll say why. Because when you look beyond Siakam, Van Vliet, and Ananobi from a contractual standpoint, Powell can opt out. The way he's playing, why wouldn't he? Lowry's a free agent. And a lot of the other, you know, like a player option on Boucher, player option on Baines. And you got a lot of other guys that are just on a short leash. And, you, you know, a lot of times when you have teams like that, they're all playing for themselves. And they show up in uh, their own different cab. And they do their own different thing. And yet uh, to watch the brotherhood that they have on the bench and they're all pulling for each other and uh, whatever pouting and maybe uh, got disharmony occasionally that happens on teams, I don't see a lot of it. We're not around it, obviously, but I'm just really impressed that to start two and eight, uh, a team like this could have gotten fractured pretty quick. And uh, here they are at 15 and 15, and who knows what's going to happen in the final 42 games. But I'm really impressed uh, with the composition of the group and the dynamics in play of where they're at right now. It's, uh, I'm, I'm really, really impressed. Well, Jonesy, uh, Jack mentioned Norm. They don't win this game without Norm and Powell. No. And the way he's been playing over the last 10 games is, is off the charts. Well, uh, yeah. look, there's a couple things in play. Um, he's a young veteran now. Yeah. And he's been on a championship team and he's measuring things. He, he knows he's picking his spots when to go. When do I shoot the three? When do I push the break? He's under control. The game, you know, the, it's a trite cliche, but the game has really slowed down for him. He understands what to do. And, you know, he, he had, a, he had a th more than a, th a third of their points tonight. And he did it at a time when they needed him to, to, to keep them in the game. He helped stake them to the lead. And they, they rode that for a while until it petered out. And then somebody else came up, other guys came in and helped them finish it off. But they needed everything that Norm gave, that, gave them tonight. And I, I, just, I just like his, you know, his, his, his attitude, his demeanor around it all. He's focused. He's professional. And I think that carries over. And as Jack said, it trickles down to the rest of the team. And it says, look. We're, we, we might all be in similar situations, as Jack was pointing out with the contracts, but listen, if we get it done collectively, we will all get rewarded individually. Sherm, this doesn't feel like an aberration for him either. Like this, the way he's playing, it feels like this is sustainable, right? Maybe not the efficiency, but just, you know, the numbers. Well, yeah, and his, his contract and the money he's going to make is going to be sustainable as well. He's going to get paid. <laughs> He is playing the kind of basketball that, you know, for your team and the success of your team, if you're owner or if you're uh, part of uh, the, the leadership group, the management group, you're happy because he's playing well. But at the end of the day, you're looking down the road and you're saying, this is going to cost the price us some money up, right, right now. Sir? He's driving but the price he, tag he deserves up. it. Yeah, he, he deserves it, though. I mean, he's doing a good job. And to your question, Herbs, you know, there's a level of this that is sustainable for, for Norm. You know, he, he, no, he's not going to be at 30 plus points every night. He's not going to be as efficient all the time, but he can play at a consistently high level and be a, 
a consistent scorer and and he's mm-hmm. shown that and to Jonesy's point he's doing it in an unpredictable way I thought early in the season teams knew what he was trying to do yeah. now he's got them off balance good decisions timely decisions playing with force knocking down the shot he's doing things with consistency and his body of work is growing to create a platform for him and his team to say, all right, it's time to open a wallet up. It's time to pay this man. You know, and, and you're right, uh, Sherm and Jonesy. And it's interesting. You know, you look at Powell. I think he's an, another byproduct of an outstanding Raptor program from when he came from UCLA yeah. to now. Right. That's one. And two, uh, you asked the question of Sherm, and I agree with what Sherm said. Can he sustain this? I think he can, and a few reasons why. Number one, he plays with two point guards, Van Vliet and Lowry, right? So those guys are incredible savants. They're so smart. Siakam has developed as a wonderful passer now. So he's got another guy who would drop dimes willingly and who could, who attracts a double team in the post. And then the last thing is, when OG Ananobi has gotten an opportunity to play this year, he has become a consistent uh, distance shooter. So when you add it all up, uh, there's a, a good formula in place there. If Norm just stays in his lane, he's going to get a lot of high, high percentage looks. His skill level, his shot, his mechanics, they're all there. I, I expect I, I, when he gets the ball and he's open, I think he's yeah. going to make it. Yeah, yeah. Jack, I agree. Yeah. yeah. We got, he, he we got looks 10 like seconds, guys. Just, it looks like he's going to knock it down. When he raises yeah. up, shoots with conviction, I just think it's going in. Yeah, it's, it's felt like that for a while now. It's great to see. I appreciate you guys doing this. As always, Sherm, I apologize again. I'm sorry. It's, I mean, it's you fine, gotta, Herb. We, Your hair is growing in. Again. You're fine. <laughs> Thanks, fellas. See you next time. Thanks for watching. You can click to watch our last episode or to subscribe to the Toronto Raptors YouTube channel so you don't miss an episode.